Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. I hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for the word today, Father God. We ask you to forgive us of any sins we've done, knowing and unknowingly. Father God, we ask you to give us understanding of this word. We ask you to... Um, open our ears and eyes so we may hear and see father god bless the ones that are hearing it bless the ones that are reading it father god holy spirit we ask you to we welcome you onto this podcast we ask you to pour out your wisdom and knowledge unto us uh, father god we ask that you get the increase and i get the decrease we ask that you help me to teach in the spirit and not in the flesh in jesus mighty name amen okay our key verse today is hebrews 13 21 may he equip you with all you need for doing his will may he producing you through the power of jesus christ every good thing that's pleasing to him all glory to him forever and ever amen subject god is going to equip me christian truths so i'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like i'm equipped by god i'm loved by him i'm letting go i'm seeking him we always want to be ready for anything we are ready for bad weather with batteries. We are ready for maybe unemployment with savings. We are ready for food shortage with water and canned foods. We are ready for anything with something. We accommodate for what we don't have for something else. And whatever the case may be, we try our best to make sure wherever we are, wherever we are, wherever we we are doing, that we are okay. But what we must understand is that whatever the Lord brings us through, He will equip us for. Whatever we lack in, he will equip us with. Whatever we need, he will take care of it. The verse today tells us that he will equip us with what we need for doing his will. If we stutter, our speech will sound as if we have no stutter. If we are forgetful, we are. We will remember God isn't a God that will place someone nowhere where they're not prepared. Just like a soldier won't be on the battlefield without a weapon. Just like us, God knew his walk this walk will be hard without him. So he sent us the Holy Spirit in the Bible. He sent us people like Apostle Paul, Peter, etc. To help guide us through what we can't and don't understand. But we have to be ready to attach ourselves to every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We, What we need and should attach to the Holy, we need to attach the Holy Spirit and attach the Bible to our heart. The Bible isn't just used when we need it. It's, it's there for us to use at all times because it's one of the most important things we can ever have. But we must use it for, for it to be of any use to us. It serves us no benefit if it's, if it isn't closer or is on the in the on the bookshelf, it doesn't show, serve us any benefit at all if we don't open it. Philippians two thirteen says, "For it is God who work, works in you both to will and to work for you for His good pleasure." It tells us here again, we are to do the will of God for His excellent pleasure. It tells us here that this is what we are meant to do. A, a lot of us are wondering what we should do and what. What his will is, and it tells us here, our destiny, our calling is to do the good will of God for his pleasure. We can please him with our whole heart. We can please him when we are fully relying on him. And that's what we must do when we are walking in our calling. The calling he has placed on my life and many others. We can't walk in that calling without the beckoning and will of God. We can pretend like everything we do is through our, our will and strength of friends. We are sadly mistaken. And when we place every weight of our calling on ourselves, we will have a hard time doing it because that's not what we're supposed to do, be doing. We're supposed to be equipping ourselves with whatever God placed before us. But some of us forget it takes God to run our lives and not ourselves. First Peter 5, 10 and 11. And after you have suffered a little while, the Lord all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in, in Christ will will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion, power, forever and ever. Amen. First Peter tells us that God will restore and confirm and strengthen and establish us. God is going to move in our life to restore what's lost, confirm his calling, and strengthen us in a time of need, and establish his work. Some of us haven't suffered anything, and we're ready to throw in a towel. Some of us are too busy doing things in our strength only to fit, fall on our faces. God wants to take the time to see about you, about me. But he can't if we're not willing to stop and allow him full control. How often, friends, have you tried to do something without God? It didn't last. Anything that's not started with God won't last. We studied that a couple of weeks ago. We can we can have all the donations after donations given to us, but if God isn't behind it, are you? 
you're going to fall every time. We have to start getting ourselves together. We have to start depending and relying on God and not our knowledge. First Peter 4, 2. As a result, to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passion, but for the will of God. That is another thing we must get rid of. Is it get rid of to be fully equipped to flesh. We must let the flesh and our desires go to the back seat. And the moment we give our flesh to God, the moment we start doing the will of God. But until then, friends, we will never step into a pulpit or do anything the Lord is calling us to do. Because how can He we be fully filled with power to heal and to deliver if we are playing into fleshly things in the world? It's time to let go so we can be fully equipped in God. Today, we study how we need to be equipped and how God can do that if we let him. We aren't, we, we also learned that we can't do anything in our strength. We must move according to how God desires us to be. We also learned that when we are dabbling in the flesh, we still won't accomplish anything. When, when our flesh is leading the show, we have to be ready to let go of the control and flesh in order for God to be in control. Are you ready to let go? Are you ready to allow God to equip you for what he needs? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, please forgive us of any sins we have done wrong. Help us to surrender our flesh to you. Lord, we ask you to guide us, protect us from this world and from the things we do. Lord, give us strength to face our biggest battles. We ask as we face them, please comfort us. Help us to walk in our calling and do it while holding your hand. Father, rebuke anything seen and unseen that is coming against us. We ask that you open your mind to understand Open our minds so we may understand the word. We give you praise, glory, and honor for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. So, today's topic is God is going to equip me. God has equipped everyone that have ever done anything for him. That's Moses. That's Peter. That's Noah. He have gave them, even David and Daniel, He have give, he's given them something to help them make it through. And a lot of times we look at the gifts of God or some things of God that he's given us. We look at it as small. We look at it as not being enough. But when we use it the way he wants to, it's always enough. Just like uh, Moses, uh, if you can remember, he had a stutter. He just said, I don't want to do this. And God said, well, I really want you to. I, I know you stutter. He's like, but you know I, I can't do this. He's like, yeah, you can. He's like, no. He's like, get my brother Aaron. He, he's, he's more equipped than I am. He's like, okay, you can bring your brother. You could do that. And he accommodated it. But I know when Moses did speak, he didn't stutter. He removed that off him. He he took that away from even uh, Gideon. Gideon was a coward. He removed that off of him. We have to be led by God with the, the things that we're saying he's telling us that is our calling. We have to make sure this is the calling he wants to walk in. Because whatever calling he gives us is going to be easy. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be something we have to struggle with. It's not something we have to contemplate with. It's gonna come with great ease. It's because he's equipping us. Even whatever journey or season that we're in, he's gonna equip us to deal with that journey, deal with that season. But we have to make sure we don't step out of pocket. We don't step out of line. We don't step out of his will. Because God can isolate us and put us by ourselves. But like all people, we some people say we all need that attachment to someone. But let's just say we don't, and God places us by ourselves, and we start wondering, oh, I wonder if, if I could just make one friend. And as we make these friends and we create these bonds, and he's like, I want you alone. I want you isolated. I want you isolated for a reason so I can talk to you. Now you have all these people you're talking to, all these people you're hanging out with. That's not what I wanted for you. We have to understand, we have to ask God, what season am I in? Am I in the season of, of loneliness? Am I in the season of, 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 of dryness? Am I, what, what season am I in? Did I put myself in this season? And he will let you know. But we have to communicate with God. And that's another thing about our calling, about anything that we're facing. We have to communicate with God. It is important that we do. Because when we don't pray, we leave ourselves open for the enemy to attack. And some people might think that's extreme, like, oh, I can't miss one or two days of prayer. Spiritually, you can't. You need to be communicating with God every day. And when you grow in God, you will see that it is important that you talk to God every day, that you commune with him, that you pray, that you worship, that you meditate. 
because it's important to do so. It's important to have that connection with God. Without it, we, we are nothing. We're going to be trying. Okay. One of the verses that we talked about in this is Philippians 2.13, for it's God who works in you, both in will and to work for his good pleasure. For it's God who works in you. When we do the things of, of uh, the works of God, when we when we we he sends us uh, to do something, when he puts a call in our heart, we're doing it for him. We're doing it to, to give him pleasure. We we need to make sure also in our actions, in our words, that we're we're doing it according to what he, we're doing it according to what he asks us to do, and we're also doing it not out of flesh. We need to make sure we always stay in the spirit. And that whatever he gives us to do, that we do it according to his will and we do it for his glory, not for our glory. I, I can sit here and say, oh, I have a thousand uh, episodes in, in my podcast and I got 3,000 people that I, I, that listens to me and read my devotionals. Me, 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 me. You're me, 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 me. No, we have to stop being a me person and start saying, God. I give God glory and honor for the thousand episodes. I give God glory and honor for the 3,000 people that's listening on YouTube and on and reading the devotionals. I give God the glory and honor. You see how you change that around? You change your wording around because you can easily fall into pridefulness if you're not careful with your wording. Okay. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 10 and 11 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace, will, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore he will restore anything you lost confirm he will confirm his calling you strengthen you if you're tired you're you're beat down you're you just you just too tired to do anything he will give you strength and he will establish you he will ground you if you allowing whatever you're doing whether it's teaching preaching passing out devotions whether it's passing out little cue cards that says i love i love you and jesus loves you too if, you, if you're doing whatever you're doing and you're doing it with God in mind, he's going to help you do it. He's going to help you through whatever. He's going to establish it. That's why you see a lot of people that are establishing what they're doing because they allow God to be the head and they be the tail. They be the listener and they listen to God. And that's what a lot of people lack. They lack that drive to, to listen to God. They lack that drive to saying, okay, God, this is what I need. That this is what I need, and I need to listen to you. I need to follow you. And a lot of people lose that because they're like, well, it's my life, you know. But we're walking in the light, and that light we have to walk in is Jesus, and we have to follow him. We can't allow him to follow us. He's not. He's the shepherd. He is the shepherd, okay? First Peter 4 and 2 says, as a result, to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passion, but for the will of God. When we make the decision that we're going to follow God, we're giving up, it says, the rest of our time in the flesh, no longer for human passion. We give up human passion for God. We give up human passion to walk in the will of God. We give up our own desires to walk in God. We give up our wants, our desires, our, our imaginary life in our head that we think we're going to have. We give it up. We say, okay, God doesn't want me to have this. What do you want me to have? We have to understand that our his will for our life is going to come through but it's going to come through faster when we say i submit to you i yield and i devote myself to you just like any good relationship is dedication we have to learn to dedicate ourselves to god and dedicate ourselves to whatever he put us on half doing it is not going to cut it it's not because what he's called you to do he can get someone else to do it if you don't want to do it, he can get someone else to do it. Well, this is not what I wanted to do, but he wants me to do this. Oh, okay. And who are you? God will is more important. When we're children of God and we're faithful and we realize that our life belongs to him, we'll do what he wants us to do. We won't bicker. We won't complain. We won't say, this is not what I wanted to do, but I wanted to do this. Who cares? Our main goal in life is to follow God. Our main goal in life is to yield to him and deny the flesh. That's the way our life goes. Deny the flesh, follow God. Deny the flesh, follow God. Not dabble in the flesh and sometimes dabble with God. No, we have to be all or nothing. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm not saying this is going to be easy. It's probably going to be tough. It, it is. 
because we're denying our flesh. You have to, we, I don't want to say you, but it's, it's we. Um, if you hear me say that interchangeably, it's, it's, it's nothing against anyone. But what we have to understand is that if we walk in the flesh, we're not no longer walking in God's will. The more we give, the more we will grow. And, and yes, like I said, it's going to be hard because we're denying our wants. We're denying the feelings and the temptations that we want to follow God. But that's what the Christian life is about. That's That sums it up right there, the lifestyle, the Christian lifestyles, denying our flesh and following God. And it takes a while to do this. It's not going to be something overnight. It's something that's going to be hard to do because every day you're going to be tempted to, should I do this? What did God say? He said, no. Okay, I can't. Okay, I want to do this. What did God say? He said, no. Okay. You're constantly going to have this, this battle. The Bible even tells us we got to have a battle between the flesh and the spirit. That's a constant battle because we're saying no to ourselves. And if you're not reading the word, you're not praying, you're not being equipped to say no to your flesh. You won't say no to your flesh. You just say yes to your flesh every time because you're not allowing God to equip you by opening your word. That's why I said that the, the Bible is no use if it's on a bookshelf. A lot of people have opened their Bible and they're like, I'm opening it to Psalms 91, I'm leaving it on my coffee table. Well, do you have another Bible you read? No, this is my only Bible. I'm leaving it right here. It's no use with it open. It is no use with the Bible being open. We must close the Bible from the coffee table that we leave open and pick it up or buy another Bible. But whatever we do, the Bible isn't going to help us with it being laid up under our pillows for to stop nightmares. My mom used to do that for me. I'm being funny when I say that, but using the Bible as a as just a coffee way or a nice, pretty item in a home, that's not helping you. But what helps us is when we open a word and we say, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, please help me to understand. Please help me to apply this to my life because I want to be dedicated to you. I want to be equipped because he can't equip us if we're still allowing the things of the flesh to attach itself to us. Okay. Let's look at our key verses today. Um, go to 1 John 3 and 22. It's one of our references. If you have your Bible. Okay. 1 John 3 and 22. Yeah, this is a classic verse. Everyone has heard this verse before, but this will help us understand a lot. First John 3 and 22, and wherever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Okay. First uh, John 3 and 22 in the NLT says this, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him. We do the things that pleases him. You, let's break this down. It says, wherever we ask, we receive from him. We will receive the desires of our heart according to his, his will. If we ask it and according to his will, we receive it just like this. And because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Do you do what pleases him? Do you keep his commandments? Yes, the commandments is, is Old Testament. A lot of people like to say, oh, this is Old Testament. Um, I thought we was out of Old Testament. Yes, but the commandments is a guideline to showing us what is Christian living, what is living according to his will what is living according to things that pleases god and don't please his god if you have not looked over the ten commandments you're new to this walk please look over the ten commandments that will give you an outline of what you don't need to do no you don't we don't live live a legalistic way we don't live basically according to the commandments but these commandments will tell you what he doesn't like and it says and do what pleases him do we do what pleases him do we do what pleases him? Do we try to ask him, what pleases you? What, what am I doing in my life that's not pleasing you? Or what can I do in my life to please you? And he will answer us, but if we hear him and want to do it, it all goes back to us and our will. Do we want to give up our free will? Do we want to yield ourselves to God? Do we will it for our life to be more dedicated than we are? This year, we need to be more dedicated. This year, we need to hear the voice of God. This year, we need to pray more. And we can't pray and read our Bible more if we are not serious about it. 
Ask God to give you a zeal, a fire to, to want to learn his word. And he will do that. He, he will do that as long as you're every day opening your word. Every day you're opening your word. Every day you're opening your word. Every day you're meeting him at the mountaintop. That's why Moses was so close to God because he met him every day. I, I'm quite sure every day. He, he stayed up there for 30 days, 40 days and 40 nights, excuse me. Can you imagine being under God's presence for 40 days, 40 nights? It's a powerful thing. But God's asking us to do these things, to do what's pleasing him so he can equip us. He can't equip someone that doesn't want it. Bottom line, he can't. He equipped David at one time. And I use this story because it's so much, so many examples in this story. David, one, yielded himself. He didn't care what happens to him with Goliath. He yielded himself to be used by God. And he said, I'm giving God honor and glory and say, I'm coming before you with God. That's two. That's two things. You see, you see what I'm saying? Three, he conquered his, his, his fears. He can't conquered a mountain. He conquered a problem with God. That's four things. It's so much you can get out of that story. Go back and read that story. Yes, everyone has been told that story since there was a baby about David and Goliath. But if you look at the, the story itself, and you ask God to give you a deeper meaning, you will see so many deeper points in this story. David didn't care about himself. He wants to give God glory and honor. And he forgot, he, he did exactly what God wanted him to do. He went with no fear. God tells us all the time, do not fear, for I am with you. Okay, I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow on any platforms. Uh, remember to share with a family member or friend. Remember to place on your social media. Be blessed. Thank you.